Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Be Well, Be Keto, and today I had such a fun time talking to Zoe and John from the Ketogenic Generation, and if you have sensitive ears, don't listen because we talk a little bit about poo. Yep, that's right. So let's go and say hi to John and Zoe. Welcome to the Be Well, Be Keto podcast where we showcase ordinary people who have achieved extraordinary results. Your host is the high energy girl, health coach and personal trainer, Tracy Gluheit. Hey beautiful, my name is Tracy and I'm a health coach and personal trainer and founder of highenergygirl.com. My passion is to help women become high energy fat burning phenoms without starving to death and spending hours in the gym. So are you like exhausted from the crazy holidays and maybe feeling a little bit of fluffy? Well, guess what? You are in luck because I put together a high energy transformation guide and it is completely free. And it's going to help you boost your energy, banish brain fog, build a little muscle and burn off that belly fat. Okay, so here's what is in the guide. First off, it starts with mindset, because let's face it, your body can do it, it's your mind you have to convince. Next, we have food. There are three phases of the food plan to help you heal your body and create a fat-burning machine. It is awesome, trust me. (laughs) Also, fitness, we have components for both the home and the gym, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, because if you want to age stronger, then you need to move. And lastly, and most important, is self-care, because let's face it, we women are so crazy busy taking care of everybody else, our homes, our jobs, our families, that we don't take time for ourselves. And even on the airplane, the flight attendant says to put your oxygen mask on first. So grab this free guide, 21 Days High Energy Transformation. Just click on the link below and that will show up in your inbox right away. Have you joined the Facebook group yet? I have a new Facebook group called High Energy Girls. And That is pretty much where I'm hanging out these days, and I would love to have you a part of the group. So head on over to High Energy Girls on Facebook. Hey, Johnny and Zoe, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hello. Hello. You guys are from England, right? Yep, Nottinghamshire. Oh, you make it sound so pretty. (laughs) That's Robin Hood country. Oh, man. Okay, so for the for the listeners that don't know you yet, which I would be surprised if there are any, because you guys have such an awesome Facebook page, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Me first, then. Okay, I'm John. I'm 64. Uh, I was a teacher, but I had to retire after a nervous breakdown. But it was before I, I retired from teaching some 20 years ago that uh, I started looking into health advice into into nutrition and into in particular statin drugs i was prescribed a statin when they first came out and i questioned my nurse as to why and she couldn't really give me the answer so sort of back in the early days of the internet i started to do research and there were a few of us around the world there was uh, people like uh, stuart mclean there was Ivor cummins came on board and and we kind of started to share things, you know, which rarely came out. But, you know, if we saw something about fat uh, is healthy, then we'd share it. And we'd, and it was like gold dust. And <laughs> this was uh, for about the past 14 years. I went from maybe uh, look, looking at things like low GI, low GI load, and I could see all the flaws in that, and then paleo. And then I came across ketogenic, and now we're... We're, we're more carnivore than anything, although though we do have eggs, we do have cheese, but uh, mainly we cut out all the plants, and I, I've had a heart attack, uh, and I could say nervous breakdown, but now I've reversed my heart disease, all my blood markers, uh, uh, and, and the fitness tests that I've had to do show I've got a heart of a sort of 21-year-old, so for me, it's all about my own personal health care. And then I started to share it and started to get people to ask me, started people to come round and, and uh, want to know more about it. So I began conversion uh, of people about 
a decade ago, and then four years ago, next month, Zoe came into my life. And I'll pass you on to Zoe. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Zoe. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, about four years ago, um, a friend asked, uh, <clears throat> I was struggling with all the training I was doing, and I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. It was just hours and hours a day of, of you know, training in the gym, class after class after class. I was so frustrated. And um, a friend said, you ought to go and see John Mason because he's unorthodox in his, in his ways, but I think he might be able to help you. Um, I went to see him three hours later, just mind blown about sugar, carbohydrates, and <clears throat> the, the foods I was eating after training were not doing me any good, like low, you know, low fat, healthy grains. Um, and uh, after training all every week, I'd probably binge out on real bad food at the weekend because I felt like I'd earned it. And <laughs> you know, after it, after that, it, really, it doesn't work like that. Um, but I think initially in the earlier days, um, when I met John and I was learning so much and I was studying and I was reading articles and I was following all these great people. I mean, there's so many of them now um, that are just gurus and just awesome to read about. Um, in four years ago, I got kind of, not really killed, but I got kind of told that you, you full of crap, basically. You know, this isn't, this is BS. So that's how our... Uh, Facebook group came about and the like page. I opened them up four years ago. Um, I think there's about 4,000 followers on the like page and then we've got a closed group with the same amount of people in there. Um, and it's just gone from there. I just thought I have to share this knowledge. I have to share what I'm studying for the people that are ready to listen and to uh, have an open mind. Um, and it's just something that we do in our spare time. I mean, we, we train three times a week. Uh, I work, uh, four to five days a week but it's something that we love we just love to share and, we, and just seeing some of the um the success stories and people that message us from from what they're reading and you know I, I think we've always said you've got to do your own research and uh and if you're ready then you know take the leap but uh, everybody that's took it has had phenomenal results so it's it's i feel really blessed that i've, I've met john and um uh, that we've, we've got this journey together that we can we can share some great things, you know. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I wish my husband would get on keto with me. I'm like a solo <laughs> keto eater in my house. <laughs> wow. That's quite difficult, isn't it? You know, it's not so bad. I mean, I've always been a big salad lover. And so I have, you know, I've always loved just like a big, huge salad. And I've loved vegetables. And so it's not that bad. I just cook whatever, you know they want and I just eat what I want so I'm used to it. it's been about oh. three years yeah I know we get a, a lot of clients who come around and they find it difficult because they're sort of tempted by the husband or the wife or, or even the children when they've got to cook differently and um, that you know the wife might be cooking in the kitchen or the husband and start to dip into a bit of pasta start dip, you know notice that there's chocolates in the fridge and you know so we, what we try to do is sort of encourage the partners uh, to, to try it as well. And mm -hmm. quite a lot of aren't Zoe? Usually, the partners will uh, take it on board when they see the results of their partner. They think that there's something going on here. They've lost weight. They've, their attitude's changed. They're, they're more calm. You know, things start changing around them. And then usually, it's the, 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 the wife that does it. And then usually, yeah. the husbands jump on board. But... You know, it's like, like I say, it's um, we can have people around here. It can be a two, three-hour job to explain to them because there's so much. I mean, we're still learning all the time. It's, I mean, the more <laughs> I know, the less I know. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. But yeah. Exciting. The whole future on this is very exciting. I think there's a big, big movement, and I think it's just going to get bigger. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, I hate it when I hear people say, oh, that's just a fad and they give me the eye roll. And, you know, because literally where I live, I'm the only person in my friend group, in my family, anywhere that's keto. And I have been for a long time. And if somebody tells me, oh, it's too hard to cook for your family, I just say, then you're not committed. You don't understand the health benefits long term. Um, they're being more compliant to the rules of the keto lifestyle, but they're not really committed if they're having a hard time sticking to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Because it's not yeah. hard. 
I mean, I may say, John, you've been doing it 13 years, oh. and I've been doing it four years, and uh, I think when when you see what sugar does, um, you've got a choice, really. I mean, I would never go back to, to sugar or carbohydrates, um, but I think it's people understanding enough to know what long-term uh, damage that, that can do to your body, you know. I mean, people say, oh, I've cheated this weekend, I've had a cake, and I'm like, that's not cheat. Why, why, why would you see that as a treat? It's not a treat, is it? You're putting, extra po- you're putting poison into your body. <laughs> That's how I see it. But a lot of people think, oh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll have, I'll have my chips on the cake and then, then see it as a treat. But I, for me, I, it's not something I would see, see as that. But I suppose we've all got different views on that, you know. Oh, yeah, totally. That's a really good point. They call it a treat, but it's really a poison. It's really a poison, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and there's so many ways that you can make healthy versions of those quote-unquote treats, you know? know. Is it Marie Emmerich? I mean, she's got the keto cookbooks and that, and um, some of her recipes that come up on on Facebook, you know, and I know she's, I think she's got quite a few children. I don't know if she's adopted or she's got quite a few children in the household, Mm. and um, She's always looking, at, and I can totally understand on a on a mum's level that they need to find something that they can um, adapt or change because the outside world, for children, especially at school, there's got to be so much temptation. I mean, we know when we was at school, there was tuck shops, there was sweet shops, pocket money, sweets on the way home. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I can totally understand that um, mums need to find something that they can change or adapt to, to, to that cake or that low cost, you know. Uh, and all, all, I, I, all inspired to them, I think it's great. Yeah, you know. No, I, I had a client, sorry, I had a client message me yesterday. She she lives uh, in the West Midlands, about 80 miles away. So, so similar to you, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll do a talk o- over the computer. She was doing really well, but her, her daughter's autistic, and her daughter won't give up on the sugars and the carbs. You know, she'll have tantrums and so on. And Ruth, the, the lady messaged me yesterday, says, John, I, I, I just can't stop dipping into the sugars and that I've fallen off again. What can I do about it? You know, so the, there, is, there is always, you know, a temptation if it's there because it's in the fridge and it's in the, in the, in the cupboards. Yeah, and if your daughter's autistic and you don't want her to eat sugar, don't buy it. <laughs> exactly, that's what I told her. I mean... Yeah. It's, you know, that they, even when you have a baby, they let you have the baby cry it out, right? So they understand that the crying's not going to (laughs) work, you know? I mean, and then ask her, has she seen the movie, The Miracle Pill? Uh, We've not seen that one. We've seen the magic, um, the magic pill. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, that one. um, Chef Evans directed it, didn't he? Yeah, Pete Evans, yeah. Pete Evans, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, because it it, it, it um, focuses on that, doesn't it? That little girl, I think it's Abigail, where she's called kind of autistic and they start taking yeah. all the books and out. Yeah, and it's a great success, isn't it? I think they follow their page as well. Um, £20 pound bone or something like that. It's, it's to do with that little girl. Yeah, They've got their own pill. Facebook page, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. also food sensitivities could be an issue. I mean, there's so many things that could contribute but certainly i mean alzheimer's i mean not alzheimer's excuse me autism is a big issue and i would not be letting you know i would just be fighting it somebody my mom has alzheimer's and she said oh it's so hard to not eat bread i'm like mom what's harder not eating bread or losing your brain come on absolutely yeah you know it drives me nuts so you guys okay so i want to touch on the carnivore in a minute but first what i'd like to know is what type of results have you each felt once you committed to the keto lifestyle? Well, as I mentioned earlier, when I was in when I was in my thirties, I was probably about two stone, two and a half stone heavier than I am now. And I was a PE teacher, I was a fitness coach. I, I used to I used to take football coaching, keep fit, and so on. I've always gone to gym, so so I, I, I I'm a a powerlifting coach as well. I've had a couple of British champions doing that. So that side of it, you know, it was all good, and I was eating according to what I should have done in the night when I was in my thirties. But I had a heart attack. I, I I was told I needed statins. Now I know that cholesterol is totally irrelevant now, but 
at the time I thought, well, I'm following all the advice and, and, I, and where am I going wrong? So again, I did my own research and now I'm sort of a healthy, uh, I operate around about 11 stone. Uh, as I said, my blood markers are fantastic. I still do my personal training with people who are half my age. I, I would call Peter Pan the other day by somebody. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm 64 and, and I can hammer anybody in the gym who's 30 years younger than me. So fitness-wise, health-wise, uh, my, my, all my bloods are absolutely perfect. You know, my triglycerides are really low. My HDL is high. Uh, my ratios are fantastic. My HbA1c is below 5 if they're the figures that you use. And so everything that I've done in the past 10 years or so has, in my opinion, prolonged my life. And I've got two brothers, or I had two, two brothers. One died of cancer last year. One's been diagnosed with cancer. They won't listen. Mm. Uh, and that's the thing. Yeah. That's so sad. So my dad has cancer. He's like on his fourth time. And he, I told him, Dad, you've got to get off the sugar. And he Amen. asked his doctor. And his doctor said, it doesn't matter what you eat. Oh, my gosh. And that's what we're up against, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Agostino and Safebreed. And I watch a lot of their seminars on um, on YouTube. And I think we've just got a link to the Ohio University. And the, the Verta House shared out their videos. And I looked through it, and there's 25 lectures from Volek, Vinnie, Agostino, Nina Teicholz. And I mean, talk about education. I'm really excited to get into it. But I, I do, I, I think for me, the cancer just the research in the cancer field is just amazing but yeah like Sophie said the dogma we're just up against you know chemotherapy really and you know with this way of eating it's an I mean I'm not saying it's the only thing but combined with with treatment it's they've got a much better outcome absolutely and that big pharmaceutical mafia you know, keeps us prisoner and it drives me crazy. I mean, telling yeah. a cancer patient that it doesn't matter that you can eat the sugar. Oh, oh. And then he's sitting there with getting his chemotherapy and I call him up. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, oh, getting chemo. I said, oh, what do you do while you sit there? He goes, oh, I'm eating cookies and candy. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, it's frightening, isn't it? We it's really you... do, people really do need to understand that nutrition is at mm. the center of 80% of, of our illnesses, the metabolic diseases as we call them. You know, people understood that, that you are made of what you eat, that the, the raw materials that you put into your body is what you become. That's what people need to understand. A pill, a medication doesn't make you better, it just masks your sickness. Yep. And when you think about a PET scan, why yeah. do they inject you with glucose? Yeah, because they're looking for concentrations of glucose. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's where the tumors are. Yeah, the tumors come, they, they become first priority and pull that glucose solution to them yeah. so they can light up on the radiograph. And yet, mm -hmm. oh, you can eat all the sugar you want? Okay, keep feeding the cancer and that's a way to keep in business. Terrible. You yeah. know? So, John, how old were you when you had your heart attack? I was 40. 40? Yeah, very young, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. He was doing everything that the government told him to do, eat less, lose more. Well, you did have a very stressful job as well, didn't you? That yeah, didn't yeah, the, yeah, the breakdown probably contributed to it. But the food I was eating, you know, healthy whole grains, but, you know, plenty of vegetables, fruit and so on. And uh, that was, like I say, I'm 64 now. Wow. Um, I mean, touch wood, I, mean, I feel I'm in perfect health. So we'd verify that, I think. Yeah, you are. So, Zoe, what about your health benefits? Um, well, for me, when I first met John, I, and it wasn't initially about the weight loss, because I, because I was training so much, it wasn't, I mean, the, my problem was, I kept looking at them in Instagram and all these fitness models, and I'm like, why aren't I looking like that, you know? <laughs> you know now, and as John knows, when you look at these pictures, a lot of these women are probably taking some kind of drug or yeah. steroids to look or start going through starvation to I mean yeah for, for, for one show they might look amazing but you know to get to that stage it's not healthy at all um, so I was just you know my brain was looking at it completely different and I, I you know I'm never gonna look like that I'm never gonna look like these models in that picture I'm not um, 
But, um, you know, initially, um, that's what I thought. I'd look like, keep training and training and training. I'm going to look like these women. And no, it didn't work like that. So, um, for me, one of the first things I noticed, I was on uh, Lansoprapol for eight years, which is acid reflux. Mm. Um, after three days of going keto, I didn't need them tablets anymore. Which, you know, uh, after going to see numerous doctors over the eight years and like trying to figure out, you know, because one doctor said they're not healthy for you, you need to stop taking them. But not one doctor said you need to change your diet. Not one, they just kept giving me these tablets. Um, that was the first thing I noticed. Um, then uh, just everything came better and my sleep got better. Um, I noticed I was less stressed. I, I dealt with things a lot better. I got clarity, what they call keto clarity. Um, <laughs> I'm, now, I'm now knowing that three sessions a week in the gym with just weight training and eating this way, I feel like for the last four years I've had a life. You know, I, my, my, before I met John, I was in the gym most days, every day, and then I work at night, so I didn't have a life at all. So, you know, it's not just about feeling better or healthier. I've kind of find my purpose in life, and I've got, I've got a life. I can read, I can study, I can, you know, um, enjoy life, if you like. Before, I didn't at all. Well, I thought I did, but training all them hours. I was heading for a burnout. I, I would have eventually burnt myself out, so... Um, everything's changed in, 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 in every way, really. Oh, that's awesome. And you're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you are, you could be a model. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. So how long have you guys been carnivore? About a year. Just over a year. Yeah. It was about December, 2017 that we decided, okay, let's experiment, let's cut out the what few plants that we did have. We never had any fruit anyway. Mainly just leafy greens, weren't it? Yeah, leafy greens, but also we, we used to love full-fat Greek yogurt, mm. and we, we got to the point where, where we were overindulging, so we thought, right, let's cut it all out. But we've not touched that for 15 months, mm. uh, so yeah, we've been pretty much carnivore. Like I say, we do have cheese, we do have eggs, so we're not as strict as... A, a short, a short baker, baker. Well, <laughs> the, the man, but, the steak. but but we're pre, we're pretty strict, yeah, and, and we've been that way for fifteen months now. Okay, and what, so you were already keto for quite some time, and then you switched to carnivore. What did you notice yeah. at that time? Uh, after switching from keto to carnivore, I just got less bloating, and mm. I felt like I, I was hanging out a bit more. Um, just felt that we didn't need the plants, did we? I mean. I, People do have them, but we just felt that we felt better without them. Yeah, well, I'm kind of like, you know, very sceptical because, you know, you've got all these anti-nutrients in plants, and I thought, well, let's take those away. Let's take away any possible risk. And fitness-wise, energy-wise, you know, it's not affected us. We're, we're if, if not the same, even a little bit, we've got a little bit more energy, especially when we have to use it, you know, like in the gym, like... Uh, you know, when we go out, you know, we, we, we've got it, we, we, we've got plenty of resilience, endurance. So that facet of it is, is uh, I would put it along on par with keto. We're just cutting out any possibilities that, you know, the vegetables, the plants that we were eating might give it, could cause harm with the oxalates, and the phytates and the lectins and so on. So we've, we've kind of... Uh, over the years, though, since we've been keto carnivore, we've kind of biohacked. We've, 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 yeah. just, we've took things out, put things in, and just thought if this works. I mean, at one point over Christmas, yes, I overindulged a little bit too much on the uh, alcohol, and I noticed a beer, a beer belly creeping in. Well, not a beer belly, but just thinking, oh, my God. And then I just went meeting water, and within two or three weeks, it's gone. So, you know what I mean? It's like you, you can get to stages where you think, oh, no, this isn't working, but... I know exactly what to do if, if something's not right and just go meet water, just meet water, and within a couple of weeks it's gone. But that's really strict, isn't it, meeting water? It is. That's what one, one piece of advice that I give to clients if they, they say, Zoe, John, it's not working for me, and so on. And, yeah. go, and I say, okay, for a month, just go meet and water mm. and, and just cut out everything else. It's like an elimination diet, really. Yeah. I mean, we, if we, ever we went back to eating plants, we would feel cool about it. But at the moment, we, we don't feel any need. If we go out to a restaurant, though, and we, we need to adapt our meal, say if it's like an Italian and we have chicken, and they'll say, well, what can you do? 
instead of pasta, we'll say, oh, can you have some broccoli or mushrooms? You know, we, we, if we're out having a meal, mm. we're not, we're not, you know, when we, when we go out. Yeah, we're we? not Nazis about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys have any, like, so, okay, we were talking about treats and stuff earlier. I always tell people if they're like women, if they're craving chocolate around their menstrual cycle to use like a combo of coconut oil, cacao, um, and what do I do? Chocolate, pe- oh, and a little peanut butter. So you, you make like these little peanut butter cup type things. Um, but when you're carnivore, is there any type of a, I don't know, like a treat that you would have? Well, we do have daily about two squares of dark chocolate 85 percent for yeah. our potassium levels okay so we'll have so um like i say we're not strict strict kind of all but we do enjoy our dark chocolate but we're, we're finding what we're actually eating it it's nice food but it's got everything we need vitamin you know vitamin wise it's got things in it that supplies our body with the daily vitamins that we need because a lot of, I mean, I've shared an article this morning about the potassium deficiency. Mm. Uh, and we know dark chocolate's a great source of that. So we don't overindulge. We'll probably have two squares a day. Okay. Yeah, let it melt on your tongue. I actually, yeah. so you oh, guys put, <laughs> yeah, the slower the better, right? Savor that. Yeah. yeah. So I like this protein powder that I found that's actually made with, high, it's like grass-fed hydrolyzed beef protein, cocoa powder, and stevia and that's it oh wow and that's something that i'll mix like because i'm really like on the road a lot and so i'll make a protein shake and just bring it with me um yeah i know that's not carnivore but it's pretty for me it's like you know it's pretty close to um just eating that healthy and i've i've wanted to try carnivore i don't know why i haven't it's like I'm afraid almost. So what does a typical day of eating look like for you guys? Right. Um, um, say we've been to the gym, we'll come back. About, we'll probably do about a 17-hour fast. So we'll eat probably at 7 o'clock at night. And then the next, in our window, we'll probably be from 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. 8 the next PM, day, yeah. yeah. Um, we have hot stretchings. Um, I like my cheese, so I have the lactose-free cheese. Um, a cabanas, which is like pork rind, um, it's like a Polish meat. Isn't yeah, it? Polish sausage. Yeah, yeah, sort of delicatessen meat. So, so we'll have a snack for that. Have a snack on. Yeah, yeah, and then in the evening, what did we have last night? Well, for we eat eggs virtually every day. Well, we're trying to do. The, we, we, we're biohacking again. We want. I mean, somebody had a go at us for that word the other day, didn't they? Oh, you smell that aspirin, and it was like giving us a right hard time. But, <laughs> you know. We did, but um, we know eggs have got uh, choline in them, which is great for the for the liver, isn't it? For the it? liver, yeah. So we're uh, just doing the egg thing at the minute, aren't yeah, we? So um, we'll have, yolks more than anything with yeah, meat. Yeah, we'll just have maybe three egg yolks each with with our food, and then it will be either lamb or beef or. We don't have chicken because we, a lot of it in the UK is factory farmed, and it uh, it's not done me any good when I've picked it up from the supermarket. But luckily. I work in a butcher's. That's my day job, which is the, the the owner owns farms, obviously in the local area, and all his meat is from farm to fork. So uh, every bit of meat that he butchers is quality grass-fed meat. Yeah. So we're quite lucky, and we get a discount. And we get a discount. <laughs> so it's basically red meat, really, isn't it? But we have this last week. We've just brought a few eggs in because yeah, uh, you've yeah. done your research on choline, oh. which is good for the liver. So yeah, um, what we're trying to do is is trying to cut down on the vitamin A. So, you know, choline's plentiful in liver, but so is vitamin A. And again, a bit of research in that we've been doing lately. There's a friend in Australia called Judy Baker who put me onto it. That, it you know, he's saying that, you know, the liver's, liver's amassing all this vitamin A that we're putting into us, and it gets full, and so it pushes it out into the cells, and it, it's causing all this damage, you know. So we, we, we're kind of looking at this and saying, okay, so we're gonna cut our vitamin A down, by not having liver and so on, but we still need to get this choline, which is really important. To, it, ba- it basically helps your body export fat out of the liver. So this, ah. is, what, this is what moment. Yeah. So so three egg yolks plus uh, maybe say like a, some lamb steak or lamb chops or or a nice ribeye steak will give us adequate choline, but will keep the keep the vitamin A down. 
same as we, we can have cheese, but uh, not too much cheese. So we kind of like having about half to a quarter of the recommended daily allowance of vitamin A. Uh, but the amount for choline, around right about five, 550 milligrams, we're topping that. We're getting up to about six, 600 to 1,000 milligrams of choline. So again, it, it's one, one that's probably worth uh, looking at because the next time I go see my doctor and have a look, see what's happening to my liver numbers, which have all been perfect, by the way, but I just want to sort of get some confirmation that mm. what's happening to my liver and Zoe's liver is, is not harming us by having all this vitamin A, by having uh, by having insufficient choline. So that's uh, that's a rough moment. Again, biohacking all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. And I hate liver, so I that's <laughs> 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 What do you do with the egg whites? Throw them away. <laughs> There's no point of them, right? If, you have, if we have like that amount of eggs with our meat, it's just too filling. So we just get the yolk, scramble that up a little bit, and then have it with our meat. Um, so it's not so much nutrient dense, is it? Because eggs are so thin, yeah, yeah. aren't they? So we'll have like a six egg omelette with, with, with grated cheese in. I like to put some Tabasco in as well and some Worcester sauce. Plenty of salt in it. And so we, have, we share that, and, and again, we, we, with some meat, and, and that's it. You know, it's, it's so easy. We cook eat very it, so simply, very it's, simply. Yeah. I know people, people come to see us, especially mums and families, they're desperate for recipes, they're desperate. That's the first thing, what can I eat, what can I eat? And then they look at the list of foods that we advocate, because we've got a pinned list in the group, and it's just meat, isn't it, basically? Yeah, and, and, yeah. But like, we have a friend, Claire Walker, <coughs> and she lost about a good 10, 11 stone on this way, and she's a stay-at-home mum. And she started her own page, and she just took photos and photos. She must have over 200 recipe ideas on the wall, so I just give them that. I say, there you go. Because we're more about the science than the yeah. meals, because we eat very simply. We don't, we don't really cook. We just chuck meat in the oven, and we're done, you know. Mm-hmm. But I can understand when people come to see us, they see it as diet. They're thinking Weight Watchers, Slim and World, and they're thinking, right, what have I got to eat all day? But then when you get into it and think you don't, you're not going to want to eat that much, you know, it's 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 the first thought of them starting it, thinking, well, what am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to have for lunch? What am I going to have for tea? You know, so you kind of step them up on that way. Mm. But eventually they'll go, they'll message us and go, I'm not hungry. Is this normal? And I'm like, yeah, it's not it's normal. So, yeah. Yeah. So what about your digestive system? Okay, so like a lot of people think that meat is hard to digest. Do you guys take enzymes or, you know, did you no, guys have any constipation no. issues? No, I mean, I mean, meat, meat gets broken down by the hydrochloric acid for the protein. The fat gets broken down by the gallbladder, by, by the bile. And by the time it, it reaches the large intestine, it's non-existent. So there's no overload if you like of, of feces that we have to get rid of but our our constitution is really good and it might be sort of we might go maybe once every three or four days mm. but we don't have any problem at all because i've always said to people if you eat less crap you're crap less but, <laughs> <laughs> you know but you see i mean all these groups that we're in most people are petrified they're like oh my god constipation and and i think it can be scary because i think people especially in the uk have got this obsession of having a poo a day, you know, but um, because we're using the food for energy, it's not storing in our intestines, and you're not, you don't need to get rid of it because we're reusing it on a cellular level. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Like if your body is utilizing the stuff yeah. that you bring in yeah. because it's only eliminating the stuff that it doesn't want, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's mainly bacteria and water. Mm. Yeah, which is another reason why you know we talk about salt because. You've got to get your hydration levels right in your body, otherwise the colon isn't going to release that water, it's going to dry up the poo and, and could cause constipation. So more salt, more hydration in the body, the colon will release the water and you'll keep flowing nice and smoothly. But we do say to people, if they're struggling, add more fat, add some coconut oil, yeah, yeah, maybe that, some butter, yeah. you know, because it makes it more, it glides through, you mm. know, so, yeah, <laughs> but it is a big conversation for it, I tell you, we, we get that all the time, don't yeah, we? Yeah. That's I think funny. It's very common in, in your country as well that, that there's an obsession about uh, one's constitution. One has to go regularly. You know, there was a there was a person who, who who fell out with us and left the group because she wanted her five a day because she wanted to sit down and have a dump every morning. <laughs> so no, five a day, no. So 
anyway she left but you get that yeah i mean people are obsessed obsessed with it but there are simple ways i mean magnesium is something that you know we recommend people to take but again like zoe says a little bit more fat i mean mct oil can be a mm. plastic fantastic purgent you don't if need you know what i mean you don't need more though. yeah so do you guys um drink coffee in the morning oh yeah yeah we still have coffee yeah tea and coffee because we're english of course it's got to be english breakfast tea <laughs> I mean, at the minute, you've got, um, what's that guy named James Di Di Caranto. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he promotes that coffee's good. And then there's other guy that's just shared an article today saying that it's bad. So I'm like, oh, my God, I don't have to do more research on it because I don't know I don't know if we, we should be drinking it or not. Well, I, I, I can see, you know, the, the benefits, the phytonutrients in the coffee, which are very good for us. Uh, I've not really sort of seen anything any proper studies mm. which say that coffee is harmful in, in, in moderate amounts. So we'll have two or three cups of coffee a day. Oh, fruit tea, I, I've, I've got yeah. into that in the morning, like green tea. Uh, before I go to work, I'll have one of those, um, which I find quite refreshing. And I think there's good, some good benefits to green tea anyway. Yes, Especially I love green fast. tea with mint. Oh my gosh, that's like one of my favorites. That's <coughs> refreshing, yeah. So when I get up and work in the morning, I tend to have that first and then try and cut when I go to work. I mean, I'm surrounded by all this beautiful meat, so sometimes my hunger levels go a bit mm -hmm. about 10 o'clock, which I'm, I'm thinking I'm not, not normally hungry at this time, but I think it's the smell of the hot bacon and sausages. Um, so I try and extend my fast a little bit while I'm at work uh, and just drink fruit teas well until I get home, really. Oh, yeah, that's that's good. And I love it. I love fasting. I did a three day fast and I felt amazing. Oh, wow. Did you? Did it, what, was it water fast or? Um, I did Just coffee, coffee, tea and water. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, good. Did you have anything in your coffee? Um, I do one teaspoon of MCT oil, just the C8. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm addicted to the foam and you know how like when you put it in the blender and it gets all frothy and, um, but yeah. I do fasting workouts like I'm sure you guys do and yeah. all that. Well, every time we go to the gym, we go to the gym fasted, Yeah. you know, so, and, and we, we punish ourselves, you know, so, you know, there's no need, you know, like we, we say there's no need to, to load up like, you'll see people drinking and eating things and, and having shakes and so on and and Lucasaid and energy drinks before they even enter the gym. Well, we don't do any of that. So we're, so we're fasting sort of 17, 18 hours a day. But we've not actually done an extended fast yet. No. It's, it's in our plans, but maybe we'll give it a go in the summer. Yeah, yeah. it's not hard. Surprisingly, well, I thought for sure it was going to be brutal, but it really wasn't. So I suppose you get to a level. I suppose you get past that hunger stage, I suppose, do you? Do you get, I mean, obviously, did did you find that you was hungry? You know, it was more of a mental hunger than a physical hunger. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So yeah. it wasn't bad at all, and I felt really good. So, yeah, I don't think what, it's... How different did you feel after it? In compared to just like, you know, intermittent fasting, you know, in 20, say 20 hours or whatever. Um, physically, I felt about the same. Mentally, right. I felt really empowered and really strong. Yeah. Wow. You Where know? is it then? Huh? So like and even... you can do it again. What was that? You, and obviously now you've done it, you know you can do it again. Yeah, I want to do it like once a month, I think, because I, I'm doing it because my genetics are stacked against me. My dad, like I said, has had cancer. My mom has a shit ton of things that are wrong. And um, so I, you know, I'm 53. I want to age in health. And so I know that that's a really good, healthy practice. So I figured like a once a month, little three day fast is good. Well, good idea. Yeah. yeah, we might join you on that. Yeah, we'll join you. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You name it. <laughs> Tell yeah. me when you want to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so awesome. that's really yeah. good. So um, what's next for you guys? Do you have any plans for, I know that, you know, we're all kind of um, wanting to be ketopreneurs or whatever you want to call it, but what's next for you guys? Well, we've got a, our website's been uh, upgraded. It's, revamped. it's been revamped and, and it's not really been very successful, but you know, we, we do have a long-term hope for that. It's called ketogenicgeneration.com, by the way. 
Uh, we, we like working on that. We do regularly, and it's ups and downs, but we, we, we get regular consultations with clients. Uh, I, I do my personal training still. We do lots of research. We've just finished a course with the Notes Foundation, Nutrition Network, uh, a nutrition course on that. We're thinking maybe maybe next year going on and doing the next uh, nice stage step. of the course. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, just keep spreading the message, really. You know, that's that's what our it's passion what is. It's, it's what wakes us up in the morning, you know. Um, and you can't get enough of it. But, you know, it's like we're in so enveloped in this ketogenic world. When you go outside, it's like, how many people haven't got a clue? You know, I get people coming into the butcher shop and they're going, oh, my God, that's like so bad for you. And they're like, I need to lower my, my, my uh, dog's cholesterol, so I need to find this, like lean meat. And then all these people are coming going, oh, this meat's contributing towards my type 2 diabetes and I'm like oh, oh my gosh yeah. education people, yeah so we've become ambassadors for the public health, health collaboration which is quite a big movement in the UK with a guy called Sam Feltman uh, he's got connected I mean he did the PHC conference last year and this year Tim Nook spoke I mean Zoe Harkham I see my Hotra um, we're ambassadors for them so we kind of do what we can in just spreading the word we're into a conference um in April, aren't we, uh -huh. to meet up with all the rest of the ambassadors and just keep getting involved more with like minded people because it's a very lonely world. Mm -hmm. It's an extremely lonely world. You know what I mean? Isn't it yeah. out there? I mean, to try to talk to somebody about it, I mean, even four years later, looking at you like, gone out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't, I mean, we keep t to the group and the like page and we keep sharing, but if you're trying to speak to somebody, I mean, at work, they, they, they all think I'm brainwashed at work when I'm putting coconut oil on my coffee, you know, and I'm like, I'm... I don't know if you day. can remember Sam Felton, but years ago, he used to have a weekly podcast called Smash the Fat, mm -hmm. and it was really big over here, it was on YouTube, and, and all the greats that are, are keto and carnivore nowadays, low carb, high fat, they've all been on it. And, and some sort of uh, decide, well, I need to do more. So he set up this charity called the mm. Public Health Collaboration, charitable state in this country. And we're trying to educate, we're trying to influence the NHS to lower the carb content uh, of type 2 diabetics. And it's a long, I mean, slow... Sam's, Sam's dream is, I mean, bless him, he's only in his 30s, he's got great vision. Um, and he, he believes that it won't be in his lifetime, but turn that food pyramid upside down. Yeah. You know, you walk into the doctors and there's like saturated fat right at the top and carbon at the bottom. His goal is to get education through to the doctors because I think that's where the core the core situation is. We've got to get the doctors study nutrition and that's when we can get the ball rolling. I think it has got to start with that. Well, but, you, you know what the problem with that is though? Is that you've got yeah. the FDA and mafia and the well the pharmaceutical yeah. mafia that they only contribute funds to medical schools that are pharmaceutical driven and so all of the more natural schools don't have funding so they're just not as big and well known. I know yeah. it's a shame and you know I was saying to somebody the other day the beauty of the internet now and social media and I know we do get a lot of scaremongering about ketogenic diet I mean the more they're frightened they get the more bringing out these bloody stupid studies. Um, we're all finding our health back through social media and through word of mouth, you know, because mm -hmm. you go to a doctor and they just give you a tablet. Um, but <laughs> one day, our local GP has sent at least four or five people to us. She said, I can't, I can't really advocate the ketogenic diet, but I think you need to go and see John and Zoe. And we've put a few people that yeah. have been to the practice and she sent them to us, which is, she's in the group, but she's incognito. But it's nice that, um, so, I mean, some of the local ambassadors are GPs, and that you know, David Unwin and Jennifer Unwin of the Living Southport are saving the NHS thousands a year because they they advocate the low carb diet. So some are on it, and some aren't. You know. Yeah, and I and I actually have an appointment with our local GP. It's a husband and wife. I have an appointment with them tomorrow. Um, and you know, my blood markers are so good. My triglycerides are at like 40 and my HDL is like 60. So, you know, they're like, Whoa, they were really impressed with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm meeting with them tomorrow because I want to do the similar thing is, you know, when you have a, a person that has these issues, you know, let me help them. Cause I know yeah. that I can, I know that I can, you know, yeah. exactly. 
So um, how, how can that... go ahead, Zoe? Oh. Sorry. I was just saying that we've had we've, we've reversed type two in diabetes in people, and they've gone back to the doctor six months later, and the obese nurse stands there and says, "You still can't eat this way." You know, they've all the blood markers are there, and they're still scratching their head, saying, "No, this is not right." <laughs> this is what we're up against, you know. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it is so ridiculous. It's funny because yeah. I actually wrote this big long letter to our President Trump and um, said, you know, you like, you know, his catchphrase is make America great again. I'm like, you really want to make America great again? You need to look at health care. And we're not talking just health insurance. We're talking the whole system that's broken. Yeah. yeah. You and know, unfortunately, you know, the patriots, don't you? Oh, the yeah. Patriots. Yeah. And it's a lot of money and, you know, we have to pay more to take care of all the sick people, you know, even yeah. though like I'm really healthy, my health insurance is very high. I never even use it. I never go to the doctor, but I have to have it just in case. And plus it's a law. You have to have health insurance. Yeah. And then, you know, but we're paying those premiums to take care of the people who are eating the crap in the grocery store, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I teach fitness classes and I see people coming to the gym and their bodies don't change because what's on the end of their fork isn't changing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't outrun a bad diet. Say that again, Zoe. You can't outrun a bad diet. <laughs> That's right. That yeah. is right. So you guys, how can people find you? Well, um, we've got a website which is which is under construction at the moment, mm -hmm. but um, we are on the practitioners' wall uh, for the Tim Noakes uh, Nutrition Network since we've just um, uh, just taken the course with them on a low carb, high fat ketogenic. I think it's one of the first of its kind. Mm -hmm. um, and then the group, really, the ketogenic generation group, and the like page. The like page. And the yeah. website, remember, is ketogenicgeneration.com. It's also, uh, you can find us through, we call it shrink that fat. Yeah. So, you know, there's other ways to find us on, on Google. But as Zoe says, it's we use Facebook a lot. Yeah, we're constantly sharing all the time. And, um, word of mouth, really, mm. isn't it, as well? Yeah. But you... we've grown, you know, in the last four years, about 8,000 followers we've got. So... Um, but a lot of people will message us like you did, you know, through the through the um, like page, or they'll add us to they'll add to the group, and then they'll message us through there. Mm. We had we had a wonderful message a couple of years ago from the the great Gloria Gaynor. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Remember the song "I Will Survive." Oh, oh, the singer. The yeah. Singer. She she was in London. She was doing a concert in. Uh, in Minehead in Somerset and she was staying in London and she got a chauffeur to come up to see us for two reasons. One is she wanted to learn about the ketogenic diet and the other one was she wanted to know about training and exercise because the whole song I Will Survive was about when she fell off the stage and was in traction for months and she got a severely bad back and gives her a lot of pain. So she came up and saw us and uh, that was a wonderful experience. Yeah, we've, been, we've had um, local press, we've had um radio interviews, mm. um, and we've never really forced it, we've got to learn not to force it, because if you try and force it, it's not going to happen, we've just got to let things flow and just keep doing what we're doing, and I'm happy in doing, and feel blessed that I've been, that can learn all about this, because like I say, probably 99% of the UK don't know nothing about it. Yeah, yeah we believe it's a mission, it's a, a mission, yeah, a, mission, a calling. A calling. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I exactly believe that. I wrote a book a long time ago and I would have never advocated a low carb lifestyle. And then all of a sudden I heard about keto and I did a ton of research. And after listening yeah. to Ty Bollinger from Truth About Cancer and Dominic D'Agostino, I decided, okay, this is yeah. what I'm doing. So, yeah, and it does become a, um, I wouldn't say an obsession, but just, you just enveloped in it, in it, and like I say, we're just learning things all the time. It's different things are coming out all the time, different videos, different seminars, and it's um, really interesting to what to listen mm. and learn. And you know, I really love what you guys post. So for all the listeners, you have to go and look at their page or their group because the information, the science that they're posting is amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
I'm glad you got to um, see what we post, and it's nice to get, you know, I think in, in, in the keto world, it's very, um, you don't get much rec recognition, do you, really, for what you do, and, and I think a lot of the gurus out there don't, I mean, look at what happened to Tim Notes and Gary Fett, they went through hell and back, you know, just mm. for wanting to inspire to get people healthy, which is, you know, I'm just glad it's all turned around, and they've got the Tim Notes won his case, and Gary Fett's back on the mental yeah, board, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. These, these people you know yes absolutely so thank god yeah absolutely awesome i watched the whole court case and um that was a long trial but when it came out the end and they won i was like yeah yeah we, we <laughs> met tim notes last year yeah just a legend and zoe videoed the the uh the accolades at the end and uh the whole place erupted i've never yeah. seen I have never seen an applause or a standing ovation like that for a guy. It was, yeah. it was, it was emotional, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that link, and it was pretty amazing. So we got to send you the full standing ovation. We're in tears every time we watch it. <laughs> Aww. It's, I think two minutes long, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It was at the right time at the right place, wasn't it? Yeah, and all the greats, you know, and David Unwin that we mentioned. Uh, was in tears. Asim Malhotra, who you probably heard of, he was in tears. Peter you know, Bruckner. Peter Bruckner, Zoe Harkham. You know, all, all these people were just so in awe of Tim Notes, yeah. as, as we all are. You know, mm -hmm. it was just such a wonderful, wonderful once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. yeah, that's really, really cool because, I mean, that will set precedent, you know, and so it's just yeah. moving yeah, forward. and. Fun grassroots like i'm just never gonna give up i i'll tell you i've even lost friends because of this and you know what i don't even care it's not like i'm judging people at all because you do you stay in your own lane but um but you know i believe what i believe and i'm not gonna back down no i, no. I totally have got to stand the ground like i'm the same i mean like initially in the early days i had to walk away from everything i left everything i left my home i left my job for the power of me being being with John, it wasn't an easy journey, but I never back down, and I never will. I don't care what people say. I don't care what I don't care what they say. <laughs> That's right, girl. That's right. You feel yeah. good, and you are really providing a lot of value for the community. And I really appreciate you guys, and what you're Thank teaching you. people. Thank, thank you. you very much. It's pretty awesome. So thank you for coming on the show today, and it was so awesome talking with you guys. Thank You're you. Welcome. We've enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. We have. Wow, that was such a fun chat. I just love these guys. And they post the most incredible scientific information at their page at Ketogenic Generation. So you need to go head over there and like them. And for the rest of their links to their groups and websites, please head on over to the show notes page at BeWellBeKeto.com. Thank you for listening and please do us a favor and head on over to iTunes and give us a rating and review so more people can find the awesome show and be inspired by these wonderful stories. Make it a great day, you guys. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.